instead of focusing on the fact that you really were athletic during that beginning because let's face it you know you did you did a lot of stuff the kayaking the hiking a lot of stuff that people um that a lot of people just don't do it's definitely you know and it's not that it's definitely not this bad i actually love them both but what i found by getting involved in hiking and, and kayaking and a lot of other things is that there's definitely a subset of a subset of the population who likes and or does that oh, it's not like so um the interesting thing is I think the best place to start is you made a comment about being 35 pounds overweight. And the interesting part is that, you know, people might not see that as, as a lot because of the, of seeing all these, my 600 pound life and all these super obese people and the shows that are out there. The fact of the matter is if you want to see what 35 pounds feels like, go pick up two bowling balls, one in each hand and actually try to hold them both in one hand. And you'll see how heavy 35 pounds really is. Every time I pick up my one cat, who's about 22 pounds, I realize how much extra weight 20 pounds, even 20 pounds actually is. So can you point to anything in your beginning phase that got you to that point where it just, you, you got to a point where, uh, can you point to anything you were doing that you can say, okay, this led me to actually start to pack on the pounds because maybe people will identify that in their lives today and be able to, to say, oh, wow, this one small thing I'm doing might be leading to me being overweight. Um. So in retrospect, I can say, because um, hindsight is twenty twenty, uh, what I can say is we as North Americans, um, I haven't lived in Europe for a while, so I don't really know what they do, but we as North Americans just eat whatever we want, whenever we want, because we want to. And, you know, we're not built for that. It's not really, it's not healthy. And in the end it doesn't serve any purpose and so with me I mean I love dark chocolate uh, I drank soda at that point in time um, you know if my kids didn't finish their meal I'd finish it for them um, you know there were always my my wife's a, a wonderful baker so there's always birthday cakes or or you know banana bread or something so I cut off a big slice and I needed three meals and so it's just it's regular things that we in North America take for granted, but it, it's just when you see it from my perspective now, you realize how crazy it all is. Like we've just we've been brainwashed to to that point. So, um, you know, the fact that you might be hungry now, going and getting a donut might seem like a a normal idea. Um, the truth of the matter is there are uh, hundreds of choices that are better than that. Um, and then the other thing that I learned uh, very simply is, you know, probably I'm probably flashing forward a little bit here, but the time it takes for food to go into your stomach and hit the vagus nerve, which tells you I'm full, is 20 minutes. So if you don't understand that, you just keep eating until that alarm bell goes off and says I'm full. Well, that means there are 20 minutes of food that are heading down your esophagus, okay, that are going to be processed that didn't need to be there because you would have been satisfied without it. So just learning these things and learning how to build them into your daily life uh, make all the difference. So I was just yeah. a regular person eating regular North American things, and I, you know, it happens. And then, well, you know, not going to the gym. Yeah, and part of I think so, part of the challenge becomes, especially here. I mean, granted, the great the Great Depression back in the twenties and thirties hit the entire world. I get that. I think part of our problem here, you know, in America that you've gone through, and that I want people to really understand from the, you know the thing I got out of your beginning that I really want our viewers to understand is the fact that you know their grandparents and great grandparents went through the the Great Depression. So there was a time when if if a child didn't finish their meal, I mean part partly there was a time when children didn't have enough to eat, but if they if a family member didn't finish their meal, somebody else should be eating it because let's face it, food was very was very scarce at that point. And then we're also bombarded with the fact of the hunger problem in third world countries. And we think in North America, a lot of us think that the way to solve that is just not wasting any food rather than cooking less food. It's amazing because you have two choices, either cook less or just eat what you cooked. And so anyway, without, you know, and believe me, for, for those of you who are saying, well, you're putting down people who it's like, no, I used to do the same thing. I mean, when I was, you know, it's if I'd have a, you know, if I'd have a girl, even it even got so bad that when I had a girlfriend, 
It was if she didn't, you know, if we cook something and she didn't finish it, well, you know, hey, do you want this? Sure, I'll finish it. Um, you know, it finally got to the point where I realized I was bigger and my girlfriends were smaller, so I would cook them. <laughs> you know, we'd end up adjusting the portions. It's like, wow, what a concept. But anyway, enough about all that. So I think I think that's great. Um, and I think the, you know, the other thing, you know, it's interesting because what the last part I want to focus on in the beginning is something that you said that that gives me the impression you were active, but it sounds like it wasn't enough, which is you had the kids and you were cleaning the house and you were, you know, a stay at home dad, you know, you still had your business and everything else. So doing all that and keeping up the, it, with the house wasn't enough exercise during the day. Is that what you're saying? Human beings are, uh, we are built incredibly efficiently. I mean, if if you if you look at the calorie intake, if you go get a, a Snickers bar, and you look at how many calories is in a Snickers bar, and then you take that number and try and figure out how much you have to move to burn that off, we are incredibly efficient, and it sucks <laughs> because you just can't eat anything you want. So no, I mean it's not, and and you have to be intentional. The, the the amusing thing about this is I, I would love to tell everybody that I've invented something new and I've discovered something that nobody ever knew before. But the truth of the matter is, a hundred years ago, this wasn't a problem. And it wasn't a problem because all the things that I've learned to do are things that people were doing every day a hundred years ago. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying, I mean, I work on a computer eight hours a day and I'm still losing weight. Right, so it's how I do it. Um, so I'm, I'm not. This is nothing new. What I'm doing is kind of reinventing it for our modern society. And and so, um, you know, it's it's just we're very efficient, and and it sucks. Yeah, well, we just can't eat everything. <laughs> exactly, and part of the reason I bring it up is because a lot of people, and we'll talk about this in the second half, but a lot of people, you know, heard how much, you know, heard how involved and how busy you were. A lot of people say, and I use the same excuse at one point, well, I'm busy and this and that, and I just can't lose weight. And until they realize, until they, you know, it was something that you realized at some point in your beginning, or at least now retrospectively looking back, that, you know, you can be active, but still not burn a lot of calories. There's a, there's a difference. So before we get any deeper into that, I'd like to move into the turning point. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now. You'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.